Welcome to Zion United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. Join with me in a moment of prayer. Spirit of life, we find it hard to come together in the church, even within a single congregation. How shall we learn to be one family? loving and serving the whole of humankind. Lead us into such unity of purpose that we may receive power, not the power to threaten or destroy, but the power to restore waste places. Use us to declare your glory that all eyes may see, all ears hear, and the cynical be brought to faith. Spirit of truth, we live in a modern Babel, where words are used to conceal meaning rather than make plain. Lead the people of the world into such a love of truth that nations may speak with nation, not seeking to confuse, but to understand and be understood, whereby trust is created out of which a truly international community may be born. Creator Spirit, you give people the capacity to dream dreams and to see visions. But because we exalt ourselves and our desires to the place that is yours alone, our visions are visions of horror and our dreams nightmares. Raise up artists and prophets among us, with the will and the ability to inspire and cleanse our society, to set our hearts aflame and turn our spirits to the heights. Source of all comfort, we pray for the lonely, the sick, the sad. We claim for them the gift of your peace, that their troubled hearts may be set at rest and their fears banished. Giver of life, we remember those who have died. May they enter the kingdom where your presence is all in all. And now let us pray the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray, in the words that are most, in the words that are most comfortable for you. Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I am going to talk about pencils today because okay. you have school starting and you're so excited. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you create anything? No. No? Why not? Because it doesn't have a point that you can write with. It's kind of like life without God. It'd be like this pencil. Without God, there's no point. Or no eraser. Yet. It doesn't even have an eraser either, so we can't even go back and fix our mistakes, can we? But with God, he gives our lives purpose and a point. Mm -hmm. Our point is to love God and to love others. Mm -hmm. Would you like to read the Bible verse? Sure. Okay. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and most important command. And the second command is like the first. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. Very nice. And with that, we will start school with pencils with points. Let's do the pretzel prayer. God, I love you. Help me to love others as you love me. Amen.
Good morning, Zion. Today I'm going to share with you a story from my living room. It's called The Story of the Starfish. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful beach. And on that beach were many, many starfish. A young woman was walking along the beach and she saw the starfish and they had beached themselves and she was so worried that they were going to die. So one by one, she would pick them up and throw them back into the ocean, hoping to save as many as she possibly could. But lo and behold, the more she threw back into the ocean, the more that appeared, the harder she worked to try to save every one of the starfish, the more tired she became. Along came a man who puzzling sort of looked at her and said, why are you working so hard to save these starfish? They beach themselves and you know, they're going to die anyway. What difference does it make? With that, she picked up a starfish, threw it in the ocean and replied, it matters to this one. The moral of the story is in times like these, I think it's so important that we really look at our priorities. Sometimes we think that just one doesn't matter, just one person that we help, just one vote that we make, just one act of kindness or act of love really doesn't matter. Trust me, it does. I hope you have a wonderful and safe week. I recently completed my midpoint interview for ordination and was approved to move on to my final ordination interview. One of the requirements for that interview is to write an ordination paper where I will reflect upon the role of the church and my calling as a pastor. So these last couple of weeks I have been reflecting upon what the role of faith in church is in these unprecedented times of pandemic and fear. One of the books of the Hebrew Bible that has given me some insight into what the role of faith in the church is for me and hopefully for you in our everyday lives is in the book of Ruth. This morning I would like to share with you what Ruth has to say to us about faith and church. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the book of Ruth, let me give you a little bit of an overview about what happens in this book. Naomi and her family leave their homeland of Bethlehem to go live in Moab due to a famine. While in Moab, her husband dies and her two sons marry Moabite women, one of them being Ruth. It is important for me to point out that in the Hebrew Bible, marriage between Moabites and Israelites was looked at very negatively. Moabites and Israelites were enemies. After the marriage of Naomi's sons to Ruth and Orpah, Naomi's sons die. And it is at this point that Naomi decides to return to her homeland. Naomi instructs both Ruth and Orpah to go back to their mother's home. Orpah decides to leave reluctantly and goes back to her mother's home. However, Ruth clings to her and says those much quoted words from the Bible, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. I will die there will I be buried, if even death parts from me. When we think about faith, we tend to think about creeds and doctrines. However, I think that faith is something much deeper than an intellectual agreement to propositions. In the ancient world, faith was seen as trust and loyalty to another person. Ruth embodies this kind of deep faith. Think about the situation that she is in. Ruth and Naomi both were living in a patriarchal world where women depended upon men for protection and their livelihood. It was not uncommon for a woman who was traveling by herself to be attacked by other men. The women's role in that culture 
was to carry on the family line. And now they are both in a situation where they cannot do that. It is hard for us to understand in our modern world, but that was the way it was in the world of Ruth and Naomi. So Ruth decides to stay with Naomi on her journey back to her homeland, not knowing what might come next. As a foreigner who was not looked at favorably, would she be accepted amongst other Israelites? Would they make it back to Naomi's homeland without being attacked? How would they survive without any male working? Like I said, the male generally provided for everyone in the family in that culture. Regardless of all of this, she demonstrates an extraordinary amount of faith and loyalty to Naomi by staying with her on her journey, regardless of what the circumstances might be, might have been. In our own time and place, we are faced with many uncertainties, just as Ruth was in her situation. Will we demonstrate the same kind of trust and loyalty that Ruth did? Will we trust and demonstrate loyalty to God even when we are not sure of what the outcome might be? After this episode in the story, both Ruth and Naomi return to Naomi's homeland of Judea. Ruth meets Boaz, who is a prosperous person in Naomi's family. Ruth gleans Boaz's field so that both Ruth and Naomi can have something to eat. Boaz learns of Ruth's royal loyalty to Naomi and is impressed by her. Ruth and Naomi at this point plan a scheme on Boaz, where Boaz will get drunk and Ruth will crawl into bed with him, so Boaz will have to marry Ruth. Ruth and Boaz get married. Naomi is included under the house of Boaz, and there are many children that come about because of this union. At the end of the book, there is a genealogy where King David is named as one of the descendants of Ruth, and also that another descendant will be Jesus from Ruth, a foreign Moabite woman, and Jesus will be our Lord. What the story of Ruth tells us about church is that it is relational, and we all participate in communal ways with one another because we believe that it is through these relationships of interdependence that God is revealed to us. The community of the church is with you in the hard times of pain and suffering, in addition to the times of joy and celebration. The story of Ruth begins with the sadness of loss and ends with the joy of children being born. This is a model of what the community of faith is all about. Another aspect of church that Ruth teaches us is that God is present when there is unity in diversity. We learn more about God when we can listen to and acknowledge the life of someone who is different than us. We ourselves are expanded and made more whole. And who modeled that better than Jesus, who organized a diverse group of people who are not looked at kindly by the religious leaders of his day? Let us be that community that demonstrates trust and loyalty to one another in bad times and in good so that God can be revealed to us through our being in communion with one another. Amen. Yet there are times when we find we'll answer another voice and call. But if we are willing, you know he will teach us is for some to be no matter where cause he knows yeah, yes he knows 
just how much we can Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 16. Hear these words. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilon. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. When they had lived there for about ten years, both Milan and Chalon also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons or her husband. Then she started to return with her daughter-in-law from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had had consideration for his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughter-in-laws, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb, that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way. For I am too old to have a husband, even if I thought there was hope for me. Even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you. Because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. Here ends the reading of Scripture. Now for our benediction. May we go out in the world this week with a faith like that of Ruth where strength of faith is found within a diverse community of interconnected love. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.